All right, hey guys, um, I'm here coloring this Robin commission. Um, the client asked for all the the Robins, the inc incarnations of Robin. Uh, here's Stephanie Brown. Spoiler, Batgirl. Um, I'm just kind of lassoing an outline around her, and I'm going to fill in a dark grayish blue color here. Um, this is going to be the base color for everything. I'm going to deselect some of this lasso. This is going to go really fast, so um, I'm going to try to pick and choose where I'm going to explain how I'm coloring this. Right there you see a little bit of um, the gradient that I used. And I only do that every once in a while just to get kind of ideas for what colors I'm going to be throwing down. And then I select it with a teardropper and come up and smooth it out with the brush. I, I usually do uh, everything on one layer per character or per element. Um, some people do like tons of layers per like highlights or whatever. I like just painting straight on the layer. Here I go again. I, I, I use the lasso a lot just to select areas uh, after I flat uh, just so I can kind of get the best uh, coverage with the brush without having any kind of funky um, out of line coloring going on and I have to come back and erase it. Mostly it's just a lot of lasso brushes and uh, just picking and choosing the colors here. I'm trying to go for a cooler palette on these back characters. This, I, I'm coloring up really kind of bright. Uh, it's not exactly where I want it to be. Um, you'll see a little bit later on where I'll mess around with the selective color option that Photoshop has. Um, it would probably be nice for me to say that this is a Photoshop CS4 and I'm coloring this on a, a Wacom Cintiq 12WX. Uh, tablet display. Yeah, it's very vibrant right now, these colors. I'm trying to go for those nice vibrant greens and reds and something about it just screamed too bright. I wanted them to be the past, so I, I come around and uh, I just tone it down a bit. Just swap out some colors here and there. And you can do that with selective color, and that's up in the uh, um, image adjustments menu right here. Just swap it around, make it a little cooler, uh, do a little line hold here so I get rid of some of the harsh lines in her hair and on the nose. She being female, I wanted to give her softer features, so I uh, wanted to take some away of those dark blacks inside the character's face. Just touching up the belt here. I just jumped straight into Tim Drake here, um, using the same color palette as the Robin costume next. To him, I just by-stepped, or bypassed a whole step, and I, uh, I think it came out really good, and I'm keeping this palette in mind for future jobs. A lot of just straight brush. I'm not even attempting to go in with the lasso this time. Just straight brush. Uh, again, just it's a hard brush with the pressure sensitivity of the Cintiq working to my advantage. You see this menu pop up a lot of times. So a lot of it's uh, me just swapping out the size of my brush. Um, you can do that by hitting the keyboard shortcut, which is like uh, the two brackets right next to the letter P. Um, the one on the left makes your brush lower or smaller, and the one on the right makes it grow or enlarges the brush. 
but with the little switch or the little button on the stylus for the Cintiq, it's a lot faster for me just to click the button and move the, move the little menu dial slider guy to increase or decrease my um, brush size. more of that lasso work here. Just kind of selecting certain areas and picking and choosing where my highlights are gonna go. Trying not to get too crazy detailed with some of these features. I feel, feel like if you just sit back and kind of think about where the light's gonna hit and just play off that, it looks a lot better than actually just trying to be super real about it. The actual runtime of this uh, ended up being around three hours, so I had to try to compact this, uh, and it ended up being, I think, 25 minutes long after I sped it up a bit. So it's three hours worth of work you're seeing in 25 minutes, and I hope I'm not boring you <laughs> horribly. I, I was thinking about... Uh, sectioning this off into parts, but I think I can swing a whole 25 minute. Oh, there goes my, uh, somebody invited me to Facebook. Oh, thank you. I'll be editing that out. Um, let's see here. It is kind of, I flatted here strictly with the brush. Um, I usually don't do that. I usually go in with the, the lasso, but uh, I was in the groove and just working uh, really fast on this. So I've got I've got just the speed going on my side. Um, these characters are a lot of like, so I'm not having to think about my color palette at this point. Um, trying to make them different. Trying to make them the same as they're the same kind of thought as they're the past. Um, a little tint of red here on Jason, mixing that with a little green. So instead of just choosing a color, I'm kind of mixing it on the on the plate there. Same with the hair. I wanted to differentiate it a little bit and give him a little a little red uh, foreshadow, <laughs> if you will. Doing a final. Uh, brightening of the colors there. They were a little dark and taking a gradient on the background and just kind of brushing. I had this cool little splatter brush that I uh, was given by one of my friends and uh, you should check him out. His stuff is Eraser X on DeviantArt. Uh, Retro Arrow on Blogspot or Blogger. His name is John. Check it out. He's a pretty, pretty amazing colorist. And here I am just, again, going straight to the brush, not using the lasso. But when I start detailing stuff out, I'm trying to make it a little bit more hard-edged on these characters, make them a little bit more modern looking. Uh, Trying not to rely on gradients as much, uh, trying to work it with the brush. I used to use a lot of gradients in my work. I don't know if any of you know my, my DeviantArt account. Uh, it's crisishour.deviantart.com. You can see a lot of my past colors and I relied a lot on the, uh, the gradient tool. Um, a lot on the dodge and burn tools as well. 
but here I'm just picking and going with uh, the brush. And it seems to have worked out pretty pretty well, and I, I've found a, a style that I think works really well with my art. As far as the coloring goes, I, I made a cohesive piece. to come up with some of the reflections on on the uh, emblem and the little pods or buckles or whatever you want to call them. Doing a little separation from uh, the background here. Just on the couple characters I think really need it. I out something here where I was going to try to separate it a little more, but I don't think I liked it, so I ended up erasing it. Going on to uh, Batgirl here. Batgirl has a lot of purples going on, so I wanted to try to stick with something that wasn't blue or purple um, for the black. Just something to contrast it. And, uh, I wanted to try to go warm with the foreground characters as I was going cooler with the background characters. So uh, I think I've flatted every one of these characters with a uh, like a brownish gray, like a warm gray. And I do a lot of reds and um, roses and pinks. Blonde hair is kind of tricky. You don't want to get it too yellow. You don't want to get it too um, not yellow or white. Uh, eggshell is pretty pretty good. So not golden. And here I go in with uh, just a little bit of purple on her cowl. And then a little outline here for separation. You'll see me zoom out a bit. Uh, I'm just trying to check out the composition and see where the colors are working and pulling in and out. Because when you print this thing, it prints at a 25% and you want to kind of zoom out to see how that's going to be. All the buckles and cool belts that the, the Batman Gotham verse uh, have. It's really fun to draw. You can't really go wrong with buckles and belts and stuff like that. Um, this piece has really inspired me to do a little bit more from the Bat world. Um, I, I've done a couple things. I'm usually a Marvel guy. To be honest, <laughs> so the the warm reception to this piece has actually made me uh, go off and rethink my my personal drawing strategies, and attempt more DC characters here and there. So expect a lot more coming from me uh, shortly. Here I am with the the pinkish purple parts of Stephanie's Batgirl. I wanted to differentiate this part from her cape, so I, I'm trying to make this part a little dull, as in her cape a little bit more vibrant. Here I go with a little bit more excessive outlining. <laughs> I didn't like that, so I just kind of took it down a notch. And there I just brightened it up a bit and added a little bit more uh, saturation to that cape. 
And then to contrast her purple and the coolness of the background, I wanted to go with some, some green. Cut in some gradients here and then brush in the rest of the, the highlights and details so it softens it out a bit. I actually put a color hold, which is coloring the line art on the smoke there to reflect the background of the blue. So instead of black lines and hard lines, you'll see that it softened up by uh, just adding a little bit of that blue from the background of the smoke. The green. Let him here. Um, this is Dick Grayson, Nightwing. So I wanted to flat him, and I started flatting him in his flesh tone. And I realized that would have been kind of silly, as I've got a lot of blues on this character. So I, I chose like a darker blue, a gray blue. You can't really go warm with Nightwing. I mean, I, I guess you could, but I don't think it would look super right unless you had the, the background mood. To uh, the environment to go with it. So just a lot of blues here. Base it in blue. Can't go wrong really. I'm painting over the line art here as I wanted some just a little bit more definition for the character. Uh, I thought that the, the, the solid black was uh, kind of drowning him out a bit from Red Robin in the foreground there. So uh, I just kind of wanted to add a little bit more shape and definition with a layer of blue. Passing the whole gradient or lasso from the last time, just going straight brush on this one, and then doing a line hold on the, the line art here, making it a little blue. Then we're going to jump over to Jason Todd. I think I saved Damien for last. Scoping it out here for a bit. He seems kind of ghostly right now, kind of washed out. Kind of dig it. <laughs> I was fighting myself, uh, trying to squeeze in Hush, and I'm like, well, if I put Hush in, then I'm gonna have to throw in spoiler for Stephanie. And a couple other people mentioned some other characters. I think there was uh, the new Arkham Asylum game. I'm guessing it's new. I'm not a huge video gamer. Uh, they're saying that there was a Tim Drake Robin in that that looked pretty cool. And maybe maybe I'll do uh, another piece, but just with the ones I didn't squeeze on here. And then somebody yelled at me for. Uh, not including the Dark Knight Returns uh, Robin. I think her name is Cassie. But I could be wrong, so don't yell at me <laughs> if I am. Like I said, I, I was born and not raised, but I have Marvel in my blood. and That's kind of where my allegiance lies. Uh, so I'm slowly learning and trying to get a grip on the whole DC Universe rudimentary Batman knowledge is kind of what I got. I know Superman too. Like, mainly the 
things that you should know about the Justice League members. I'm trying to give uh, Jason some. I, I think I made his boots a little too high, and so it, it, the the way I drew Jason here, uh, he's a little short from what people tell me. I really don't know the character's standing order, but uh, they say he's a little stumpy, and if, if I do have one regret about this piece, it's uh, probably making his boots a little too high, a little too uh, moon booty, a little too uh, stumpy looking, and uh, making his jacket a little too long coming over, so it forces you to see how stumpy he kind of looks. When, in reality, he's not horribly stumpy. He's just a little off. So, uh, I'd probably grow him a few inches. I'd keep the back the way it is, but, uh... Yeah, I'd probably change him a bit. And here comes Damian Wayne here. I had a couple of requests uh, to see him in his hood, and uh, I just kind of wanted to keep it straight Robin, so people that didn't know that it was supposed to be Robin would know that it was Robin. Give him a choppy haircut. And again, I'm just working out with uh, the brush here. Usually when I digitally paint, I don't know if you guys have caught on, but uh, I usually try to do darkest shade first. Uh, try to do my darks first, lay it out dark, and then paint my lights over it. I know some people work the other way around, and when I traditionally do stuff, like markers, obviously, it's going to be um, light to dark, because I can't overlay the dark or light markers on the dark markers. And here we go, just kind of painting it out, not trying to get too detailed in the folds and seams here, just breaking it up a bit so it's believable yet, you know, not distracting. Coming down to the home stretch here. Working out some of the shines and material of the belt. Relying on this lasso to pick some of these areas up. So the best thing you can do is just flat it and separate it from the piece. Each one of these characters is on a different layer, by the way. So I'm not running into any problems with the rest of the characters. Um, really is a lifesaver to having solid colors and um, being able to select certain parts and just work on it. Finish off this boot and I get to the ground here with the bat symbol and uh, should be done. it a bit. Take my brush from the background again. There we go. Just gonna work it there. Voila! We are complete. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, video here and hope to make more and uh, hope you guys will check it out.